Okay. Hello, everybody. Shall we ready? Ready to go? Okay. Hi, everybody. Father Bill. I am in the back of the house, the parish house, where I was in the last video, a little bit in a different kind of orientation. Uh, what's behind me is, of course, the fake wood stove. But you know what? Thank you, Father Dave. <laughs> I really like this. This is wonderful. It's very warm and it's kind of cozy back here. And it's also a place where I do my prayer. So in my homilies, I've mentioned having a space for prayer. Well, this is mine. I'll just kind of move the camera over here. That's my little prayer chair right there. And you can see some artwork that I have yet to, and, and boxes that I've yet to uh, deal with yet. So that's the scoop there. Uh, but hey, I'm, uh, I'm uh, going to be uh, wanting to talk to you about what's going on this weekend. And one of those is, normally I'd be preaching, but Deacon Brett, God bless him, has agreed to do the preaching. He's on vacation, uh, but he'll be back to do the preaching. And I'm going to be doing an engaged encounter retreat. Uh, I'll be there for all the masses, but I've done these in the past. And, uh, but that's been in the decade. So they've they reformatted it and have a new, they have a new booklet. So there's the engaged encounter booklet. If you are uh, going on an engaged encounter, that's what they use, and there's it has uh, things for them to fill out and reflect on and things. So I'm looking at the questions and the talks and stuff. So, um, but I would like you to think about this. So we are in the time now where it's clearly getting to be, it's fall and now pushing into winter. And this is a time where actually couples are now starting the process of doing their preparation for marriage. So we've received several of them getting ready, talking to us at the parish. And this is one of their options they can go is the engaged, Catholic Engaged Encounter. They can go to what is called Northwest, Cat, Northwest Catholic Counseling Center. They can also uh, go to Mount Angel where they have a marriage prep program, but that's gonna start like almost a year from now. So that's not really on the, let's say the, the track for those getting married over, this, over the summer. So those are two programs that we have. So anyhow, yeah, I've done these and it's, it's nice to be able to go on them. But to do that, uh, we have to have to kind of a deal. I've struck a deal with them because usually the priest is there for the whole time and I just can't do that. There's no substitute, we're not gonna do that. So um, I will be jumping back and forth between the parish and the house and the retreat. And it's at um, Our Lady Peace Retreat Center, which is uh, one of the wonderful things about being here in this area is everything's really close by. When I was in Grants Pass, and I required this retreat for our engaged couples. And that was tricky because that meant they'd have to drive four and a half hours up to the Portland area here to go, or when it was in the Sandy area, even further. So it's quite a, I'm, I'm blessed to be able to have this ability to be here and to be local and be able to help out. That means uh, I can go there and get back. And commonly a priest would also offer mass there. Uh, but again, because I have uh, certain requirements, I need to be doing mass at Holy Trinity they're going to then when it's time for mass come over to our parish which i mean that's just ideal right it's just uh that's the best of both worlds we everybody gets to have mass and the couples that are part of the engaged encounter get to have mass uh, as part of their uh, their weekend or experience and that's that's really important so what is on a catholic engaged encounter so i have the uh, table of contents here and i'm you know if you're getting or thinking about getting married and had a, a young lady talked to me this over this weekend that uh, her and her fiance are considering getting ready uh, is number one uh, you, the process is six months long the the engaged uh, preparation for the church and that is a diocese wide policy so no matter where you go that's what's going to be going on uh, what's also needed is uh, some paperwork which is what we call freedom to marry freedom to marry paperwork which asks questions about basically who you are and are you free to marry? Is there any pressure, anything that's in, in the way, an impediment? Uh, an impediment is something that blocks marriage, uh, that kind of stuff. Plus, uh, witnesses. You remember in times past when, uh, well, I'm not sure actually, I've, ever, I've never seen this, but on movies, when people get married, the minister goes, is there anybody here for whatever reason uh, has an issue with them getting married, right? And of course, that's uh, the stuff of drama, right? Well akin to that but not really like it but akin to that we then need the couples to have witnesses sign affidavits to the preparation their or should their readiness and their openness to be able to get married can they get married are they free to marry so here's how this works uh, each couple is supposed to have two witnesses 
And those have to be people that have known them for a, for a long time. And if it's a parent, then that is a mom or dad, then only one one witness for that person is needed. And then if it's the same thing on the other side, if the other fiance, uh, they have their parent or parents available, then one parent can do it then as well. So the minimal is one each, but uh, commonly that doesn't, doesn't always happen. And so there'll be two witnesses for each for a total of four. And that's, um, that's just so important. And it's important because uh, these are these are serious things, right? Getting married is a serious thing. Uh, the other things that are needed are a baptism certificate and not the one from the, the original one. So we sometimes mistakenly say the original one, not the actual one from long, long ago when they were, you know, first born there, uh, but uh, a new one, a new original one, uh, one that's fresh. So we ask the couples to go contact their churches if they are Catholic and say they're getting married and they want a copy of their their baptism certificate. So why would we do that? Well, first of all, it verifies that this person is a baptized Christian, Catholic Christian, um, and that they've received First Communion, and it'll also hopefully show that on there that they are confirmed. It's, it's ideal that they are confirmed. It's not absolute, uh, but it is something that we want them to be as confirmed, uh, and we work with them as, as, as we can in this regard. But interestingly enough, um, and you might, you, you might find this interesting uh, as well. Sometimes, and it's been rare, so two times in my 22 years, we had um, a gentleman, uh, the, the groom, I'll just say, uh, say that he couldn't get his baptism certificate. And I said, well, how do you, why, why do you say that? Well, my, the church burned down. And it's weird, because in seminary, in some of our classes, that was kind of a, uh, an example, if I remember correctly. Uh, you know, they might say the church burned down and they're just trying to make an excuse. Well, in this particular case, because you know, it does happen, right? But in this case, or in these two cases, uh, we then called the other place, the other location. And it actually was another country. And luckily, I had a parochial vicar uh, and the, the church. We were able to call the parish in that other country using their language find out if this church was real, if it existed, if it had burned down, and what's the status on getting these documents or the baptism certificate. So uh, one of my priests, my parochial vicar, calls the church. It's fine. And even the priest says, oh yeah, no problem. I can get you that certificate. Um, well, his, and in fact, I just saw his wife and his two kids just got their first communion last weekend. Did, did you hear that? This is called bigamy. So he was in another country, married, has two kids, came to the United States, thinking he's going to start a new life again and pretend like he doesn't, he's not married. Well, you can imagine what that scenario looked like when we had to sit down with a couple of them. In fact, the other priest and me were there to speak with this uh, young couple and explain to her the details and then tell him, well, here's the data. Here's the baptism certificate. We actually got the baptism certificate because on the front side it has the name and when it happened on the back side, it has those sacraments. It will say something like first communion, uh, possibly, but more like confirmation. And if the person was married, it'll show that. Yeah. And of course it did. And so and there was no divorce and there was no uh, annulment sought. So if that ever happens, if a divorce happens and annulment occurs, those are notated as well. That So for, when couples come to us and they've been previously married, um, divorced, and uh, had an annulment, that person would still give us the, our, a baptism certificate if they're getting remarried. And that baptism certificate will demonstrate and show and prove that there was an annulment. So uh, that didn't happen in this case. So that pretty much ended that, uh, that particular engagement, as far as we know. Uh, you can imagine what the, the young gal thought of that. She was crying and uh, yeah, it was kind of tragic all the way around. But it starts off with a lie. This is why we take these things seriously. And that's why the code of canon law even exists. Uh, because we human beings do some silly things. And so the church, like a parent, Right? Mother Church uh, wants to guide us and help us. And so these laws, some are human laws, some are divine laws, we have to be reminded of, but some of these laws we have to remind ourselves, like you can't marry your first cousin. There's, just, there's genetic things here going on, just to start, right? And there's a bunch of other stuff, but these are 
uh, what they call consanguinity uh, issues, how close you are in blood relationship. And in some places where there's a small town and the people come to us and they have the same last name, we, I have to ask, okay, so um, how are you related? Because we need to know that. And they need to know that because you can't marry first cousins, right? All right. Okay, so I kind of detour. So engage encounter. So I'm doing this engage encounter or helping out. I'll be kind of popping in and out because I do have other responsibilities. First is the parish, of course, but I want to help out. So here, here's the topics. So if you're ever wondering what, what this particular retreat happens to be about, um, these are the topics. Are we really communicating? Is romance enough? Management conflict, creating a life-giving marriage, decision-making or decisions in marriage, financial fidelity, uh, two become one, unity in marriage, uh, natural family planning, so that's around the, the, the uh, teachings of the church around sex and marriage. Uh, there's some reflection time, more about intimacy, again, that's more about sex, uh, or I should say, it's actually the subtitle is, intimacy is more than sex. Becoming a family, forgiveness in a marriage. Uh, uh, this is interesting for me that uh, you've probably seen it. Is, what was it? I'm trying to remember the name of the movie. Um, it's not coming to me. But there was a saying that love means you never have to say I'm sorry. Which is like, ah, gag me the whole set of silverware, right? Uh, no, no, no. Marriage, or I should say love, means saying I'm sorry a lot and mean and it it's a time where we have to ask for forgiveness so love means you say I ask for forgiveness a lot or I forgive you a lot anyhow um then it's just the sacrament knowing about the sacrament and then stewardship which is about finances um, and that kind of stuff so that's that's the whole weekend it's very intense it's very it's very intense and uh, they get what they do is they basically um, have talks done by a senior couple who've been married married many many years and then a younger couple um, about 10 years and then a priest and they have the talks written out the priest might have them as well i've had them in the past i may not be able to get to write them out uh, but i'll make some notes so i can add a few cents a uh, few pastoral uh, sensibilities to the whole thing uh, and then and go forward with that so that's what I'm going to be doing. And I ask you to pray for our young couples, or maybe some of them are not young. There's some also senior couples, right? Uh, and I've asked some of my senior couples to go from Grants Pass when I was at St. Anne, and they loved it. You might think, oh, they've been, and then there's one couple, they were married before. They are both, they were widow and widower. You might think, well, what can they learn? They loved it. It was a great time to really talk about the important things, to reconnect in, in a kind of a program, pro, programmatic way. A lot of couples think that they've talked everything out, but um, I like to say nobody wants to be duped. I know I don't. And when one walks into like an agreement about something and there was something not known, there's the sensibility that one could be duped. So uh, this is one of those ways, amongst many other ways in marriage prep that we want to help and walk with uh, our couples, our wonderful married or engaged couples, so that their wedding and their marriage would be awesome. And there's even a saying, it says here, a wedding is a day, a marriage is a lifetime. Actually, a wedding is about 45 minutes and a marriage is a lifetime. Folks, okay, anyhow, so I'll be, you'll see me at Mass and uh, Deacon Brett will be preaching and I just would ask that you would pray for the engaged couples that are coming to the engaged encounter and other couples who are yet to, to get on track with this. They will come to us soon because uh, summer is will be coming and they need to get going within a six month period of time. So next several months, we will be seeing folks and this is a perfect time to start praying for them. Okay, folks, I'll see you this weekend. God bless you and have a great day.